All right, so here we are. We're going to talk about balancing chemical equations. So as you can see, we talk about why do we have to balance them. Well, there is this thing that we've been talking about all year long called the law of conservation of mass or the law of conservation of matter. And what does that say? That says that whatever goes into a chemical reaction can't magically appear or disappear. It has to come out in a different form, but it has to come out. So everything you start with shows up somewhere at the end. No magic happens. Well, it may look magical, but from a accounting standpoint, nothing appears or disappears really in the universe. So that's the why, why we have to do this. So how do we do it? Well, we do it by using coefficients in the chemical equations. What we cannot do is change formulas. And I'm going to make a point with that right now. Let's take a very simple reaction. Hydrogen gas and oxygen gas produce water. So we have a molecule of hydrogen and a molecule of oxygen. Hydrogen has a single bond between them. Oxygen has a double bond between the two, uh, two atoms. Remember, those are two of the elements that always form diatomics when they're a pure element. Not when they're with other things, but when they're a pure element. So those produce water. And you might say, well, Mr. Carter, what happened to the other oxygen? You said things can't disappear. Well, that's because I haven't figured the recipe out correctly yet. Usually, like you go to make cookies, you go to the book or the back of the chocolate chip container, and it tells you how much of each thing to put in. Well, in chemistry, what we're doing is we're figuring out what the recipe is. How much of each thing do we start with? How much product do we make? And we don't have that here yet. You might say, well, the easiest thing to do would be to put a two here. Well. If I'm making water, I don't want to drink hydrogen peroxide. That would be bad. So that I cannot do. I cannot change the formulas. What I can do is figure out how many hydrogens and how many oxygens it takes to interact, and how many waters am I going to get out of this. So we figured out that I have one less oxygen over here, one more over here. So how can I get on this side how many waters can I make with two oxygens? And the answer is, I can make two. Right? And you say, oh, but wait a minute. I didn't start with four hydrogens. Well, that means I need to start with four hydrogens. So how much did I start with? Two groups of H2. Now look at what I've got. Four total hydrogen atoms and two total oxygen atoms are going to give me two molecules of water. In each of them, I have one oxygen, two hydrogen. So if I add up all the oxygens, I have two oxygens. I have one, two, three, four hydrogens. We now say it's balanced because the hydrogen I start with all shows up somewhere at the end. The oxygen I start with all shows up somewhere at the end. OK, you say, that was a simple equation. Do something a little harder. Sure. Let's say I have aluminum carbonate, and I'm going to react that with sodium sulfate. So they're going to switch partners, and I'm going to get aluminum going with sulfate. Oh, this one's going to work out easy. And sodium goes with carbonate. Sometimes the recipe is already correct. Because let's look. How many aluminums do I have at the beginning? Two. How many at the end? Two. Already balanced. How many groups of CO3? Notice how the CO3 is here at the beginning, and it's still CO3, not carbon spread out somewhere and oxygen's broken apart. If it stays together as a polyatomic, treat it as one. Track it that way. It's easier. If 
this were to somehow turn into like CO2 and the oxygen combined with something, now I've got to keep track of everything independently. But since it stays together, keep it together. So I have three at the beginning. I only have one at the end. And A, how many do I start with? Two. How many do I end with? Two. So that's balanced as of right now, but as you can see, the carbonate is not. And lastly, let me do the same thing with the SO4 that I do with the CO3. It stays as sulfate on both sides of the reaction, so SO4. I start with one, I end with three. So you see how there are two things that are out of whack here. What I'm doing is accounting what I have before and after. Now I have to put in coefficients. I have to figure out the recipe. Okay? So, if I have three groups of CO3 over here, I need three over here. So how many packages of Na2CO3 do I need to buy? How many do I need? I need three. So now that gives me three groups of CO3. But it changes something else. It changes the number of sodium. This comes like it's in a package, like when you buy pop tarts in a pack of two. If I need three pop tarts, I'm sorry, I have to buy two packages and get stuck with an extra pop tart. It affects how many I have. So if I have three groups of CO3 from this, I also have six sodiums. See how this is a multiplying game? We're dealing with multiples. Well, since I messed up the Na, let me stay with that. Let me fix it at the beginning. How do I get six sodiums over here? If they come in groups of two as part of this package, I need a three here. That gives me six sodiums. What else does it give me? It impacts the number of sulfates, so it gives me three sulfates. Oh, and look, I start with two aluminums, end with two, done. Start with two carbonates, I start, excuse me, start with three carbonates, end with three carbonates, balanced. Start with six sodiums, end with six sodiums, balanced. Start with three sulfates, end with three sulfates. Now it's all balanced. Why? Because I put a three here and a three here. In front of the other things, it's a one that's understood. And that's how you balance it. Step by step, start with the equation. Write down each player in the reaction and how many you start with and how many you end with. And then use coefficients to get the numbers to be equal on both sides. And remember that any compound, when you put a coefficient in front of it, it affects everything in the compound. So change it in your accounting. Do that every time, and it should work out. If you find that you get numbers in front of everything, and they're all divisible by 2 or divisible by 3, you took a wrong turn somewhere, you have a partially correct answer. What you have to do is reduce it. If you can reduce them, then you do that every time. Hope this helps you balancing equations.